Hi everyone, this is George with Simpler Times Homestead and this is the second in my video series on the Tennessee Naturalist Program. So here we are arriving. At Owls Hill. A beautiful piece of property. Sorry for all the bumpiness. It's a gravel road. This first class in the naturalist uh, course is called So You Want to Be a Naturalist. And this uh, first class started with an assessment. They made sure not to call it, <clears throat> excuse me, or made careful not to call it a test. Um, although it was a test, uh, they called it an assessment. And it was something like 50 questions on a wide range of topics, uh, anything from can you identify a frog by uh, this sound or by this picture? To uh, what is the, uh, the generally what are the forests in Tennessee made of? What type of tree? Next, we talked about the type of clothes that a uh, a naturalist would need. Uh, we covered uh, your basic outdoor clothes, uh, a good pair of hiking boots, uh, clothes that have built-in uh, insect repellent. Um, and the, the need to occasionally reapply that um, as, as it loses its effectiveness after being in the wash so many times. Um, something lightweight, something that would dry if it were to get wet. Um, we talked about basic things to keep in your pack when you're out in the woods. Um, everything, um, basic ideas such as food to uh, something to start a fire to um, uh, basic first aid and we also covered a little bit of, uh, of woodland safety and, and some tips and strategies on how to stay safe and and what to look for and whatnot so then after all the classroom uh, lecture part we broke for lunch and we had about a half hour lunch uh, at which time I, I wandered around the uh, the preserve for a bit and uh, it was just a beautiful beautiful area so many places to, uh, to go and eat. Uh, it was actually hard to pick. I ended up uh, probably walking around for 20 minutes just to find um, a really cool place to, uh, to sit and have lunch. Uh, there, there's just so many to choose from. But after lunch, uh, we all met back at the, uh, the outdoor classroom where we had the morning's lecture. And from that point on, uh, we were gonna go on what I found out to be was a two hour hike. Now, I knew there was going to be some sort of hiking involved. They told us at the beginning of class that, uh, that we were going to be doing a hike after lunch. And in reading the material before the program even started, I knew there was an outdoor component and was looking forward to that. Um, I still was a little surprised that it was going to be a two-hour hike, but, but it was a fun experience. And the purpose of it, uh, in addition to becoming familiar with the property uh, where we were going to be learning on, uh, was to teach us how to lead an interpretive hike. Um, what right things to do, what wrong things to do, um, how to ensure the, the, the safety and make sure of your guests and to make sure you provide them with the information and are attentive to those that are hiking with you. Um, basically how to be a good trail guide, which was, um, which was very, really, really fun. It was a, it was a unique experience. Uh, I won't say too much on that topic, uh, for those that'll take the course because, uh, It'll ruin the beginning of it, but um, it, it's really a lot of fun. So for those of you that take it, um, you'll be pleasantly surprised. We also learned about famous Tennessee naturalists from Randy Hedgepath, who is the current state naturalist, to uh, his predecessor before him, Mac Pritchard, who is um, a, uh, he's, an, I guess, naturalist emeritus and archaeologist emeritus for the state. Um, he was instrumental in advocating uh, land use for many of our parks and is still uh, still out there educating others on our parks and wild areas. 
Uh, we also learned about um, some people from the early 1900s. Their names escaped me at this time, but people that developed collections. Uh, this one gentleman who developed the collection and actually gave it to the University of Tennessee uh, back in the early 1900s to start off their collection. Um, and it was just just a really interesting time to learn about some of the historical figures in Tennessee naturalism. I should mention that when we uh, got to the classroom, uh, we were given a suggested book list, some handy study guides, or rather field guides that we're going to be using throughout the course. And they also gave us a thumb drive, uh, which I was going to bring and show you. I don't have it with me, and, uh, which had all the course materials on it, uh, as well as some more detailed presentations and and information about the various topics that we're going to be discussing over the next year. They also gave us a hand lens, uh, which is really cool. It's a 10 times magnifier lens um, that'll help us to identify things out in the field. And I'll try to remember to get that for the next video. Uh, I'll bring that out here and show you what it looks like. Uh, it's basically a little lens, probably the size of a quarter, that sits on a lanyard around your neck. But that was really, really cool to have and a really nice gift to get from them. One of the other things that we learned was uh, a really simple topic to think about, but something that's really necessary to know, and that is, how do you become a naturalist? I mean, obviously you go out into nature and whatnot, but we talked about actually studying nature, how to actually be quiet, be still, and um, study the way things interact with each other. Uh, we talked about an optional class coming up on a book called The Forest Unseen, which is a book on one man's study of uh, a basically, I think it was a one meter um, circle that he did in a forest. And for over the course of a year, he just went out to the same spot in the forest and he would view all of the activity inside this one circle. Uh, no matter uh, the weather conditions, whether it be rain or sun or snow, um, throughout the entire year he would go out there and he would document every single thing he saw. And it really helps put things into perspective that there is so much going on around you. One of the things about observing um, that I thought was really, really cool, what they were telling us was, when you go out to observe something, go to that area and just sit. Um, they said it takes time for the woods and the environment around you to reacclimate to your presence. Um, that we, you know, there are things there that are carrying on their life, and we, when we go out into the woods, we're essentially intruding on that environment and on what's going on. So to take about an hour and use that time to just sit still and and acclimate and let the woods acclimate to you. And then from there, you can, uh, you can begin observing. I mean, you could obviously observe during that hour, but um, right around that hour time frame, um, everything kind of becomes reacclimated and you could uh, begin some different types of observations that you might not have seen, you know, had you just rushed in and sat down and, and just started looking around or, or even just rushed in and, you know, tried to sit quietly, you know, without that time to, uh, to allow for the acclimation. This has been George with Simpler Times Homestead, reminding you that it's the simpler things in life that matter.